Hey everyone, Marissa with discoverintuition.com here to do today's intuition tip of the day and see what the guides have to say. So I was just sitting down to do this video and all of a sudden Poochie started barking and going crazy and I thought, oh gosh, Jeff's home. Um, and he didn't get home and he still didn't get home and he still didn't get home and then about, I don't know, about 10 minutes later, I hear the keys in the door and he comes walking in the door. For those of you that don't know me, Jeff's my husband. Um, and Poochie, our beloved little uh, poodle chihuahua, always seems to know that uh, Jeff is gonna be home before he gets home. And so about three or four years ago when I started like really doing like trance channeling and um, having like a really clear, like a clearer connection with the guides than just kind of getting like little shots and images and, and random messages from them. I asked them why Poochie knows that Jeff's going to get home before he gets home. I wanted to know, does his higher self come home before him? Um, are we just kind of like in this lag time in the physical world? Like, does everything happen in spirit first? Is that what deja vu is? Is that why we feel like things have already happened? Is it like a little flash of, of oh, my spirit already did this and now I'm doing it? Um, so we asked the guides and they said that it was really interesting. They said that wherever we're going, if you can kind of imagine us as living in like a snow globe, this is our existence. We are living in the snow globe. All the snowflakes are our thoughts, our memories, our emotions, our feelings. We have all these different layers of ourself, which is our aura. And um, we have like a mental body, emotional body, spiritual body, etheric body, astral body, spiritual body. So we have all these different bodies. Uh, the physical one's the only one that we can see because our eyeballs can see third dimensional thing, which is, um, you know, dense matter. Doesn't mean other things are not here because we can't see them. It just means that our eyeballs can't see them. But our third eye can see them. We can sense them. We can feel them. We can sometimes smell them depending on what senses certain people are more tuned into. For me, I see stuff. So anyway, I'm talking to the guides and I said, how does Poochie know that Jeff is coming home? So they said, imagine this. They said, everybody's in their little snow globe and my husband's driving home. When he thinks of home, because he's going home, a little tendril from his snow globe connects to home. So as he approaches, his energy gets stronger and stronger and stronger and it's connected to home. So I've noticed that Poochie usually knows within seven to 10 minutes of when, um, when my husband's gonna be home. And when I started to realize that energy kind of where we're going, our energy is already kind of there waiting for us just because we've thought about it, our intention is to go there, so our energy kind of goes there. I started to realize that there was a major pattern that when about, I don't know, like 20 minutes, 10 minutes before Jeff would get home, I would start to get really stressed out. I would wanna like eat something or um, I would just kind of get a little bit stressed out. It's because I was feeling his energy before he even got here. He's a very clean person. So I would start wanting to like clean up the house. Um, the animals will start kind of going crazy, probably responding to my energy, getting all stressed out that I need to clean the house. And keep in mind, I didn't know that he was on his way home. This is sometimes when I didn't even know that he's coming home. I'll start to kind of feel a little uneasy, a little stressed. And it's because I'm feeling his energy. So I'll have to kind of stop and be like, why am I so stressed right now? And I'll call him and I'll say, oh, I'm almost home. So anyways, it's not that he has bad energy. It's just his energy. And it's also the energy that he brings home from a very high stress job. So he's got a lot of very high stress energy around him that he can totally handle. I mean, he's got it down. It doesn't bother him. He's not stressed because, because of it but you take that energy and you put it into my world, into my snow globe, and it's like, oh my gosh, so I get all stressed out. But my brain reads it as my own energy, so my brain reads it as, as super stressed, high demanding, get done what you need to get done, get it done now, get it done now. So everything I have on my to-do list, I start like rushing to try and get stuff done. So whenever he gets home, usually if I'm not conscious of it, I'm like, writing to-do lists, trying to figure out everything that I need to get done for the day when I just spent maybe three or four hours just chilling, doing nothing. So anyways, one thing that you can do to clear your husband's energy or clear your wife's energy or clear your kid's energy 
as they're coming home is something pretty cool. It's it's kind of shamanic in nature in that you're kind of using your imagination and you're actually creating a little, almost like a little energy vestibule outside the front of your house uh, to capture all of the energy that is not for their highest and best good that will be affecting you uh, when they come home. So it's kind of cool because uh, you can try it out and you'll start to notice that um, your spouse is actually a lot calmer when they get home. They're not so like, like, I need to unwind. Uh, you'll notice that the kids don't really go as nuts right before dad gets home or right before mom gets home or whomever is coming home because the kids can feel the energy too. So what you do is you tune into your higher self and the way that you do that is you're going to take your attention or your awareness down to right below your heart, which is the seat of your soul. Taking a couple deep breaths in your nose, out your mouth. And then because you're going to be grounding out a lot of emotional energy that they're carrying, this isn't like you're clearing out spirits or entities or things like that. It's more just emotional energy. You're going to want to ground yourself to the earth because these are physical emotions that we deal with on the earth plane. And so it helps to be grounded. So you're going to send your awareness down through your body, down through your legs, out your feet, into the earth. And when you get into the center of the earth, I want you to picture or imagine just a big bright ball of light in the middle of the earth. That's Gaia, Mother Earth. And take a couple deep breaths and allow this energy to completely fill up your entire body as if you're down there in the center of the earth. So just breathe in the earth's energy and breathe out anything that is not for your highest and best good, any emotions that don't belong to you, any emotions that do belong to you that are harmful to your psyche or your emotional stability or that are just getting in the way. Ah, I just felt a huge release come off of me. And once you feel like your body's full of the earth's energy, shoot back up through the earth, up through your feet, through your torso, your chest, up through your neck, through your head. You're gonna go up through your higher self, which is a bubble about two feet above your head. Pass through there. Go all the way up, 62 feet above your head. You don't need to measure it, just imagine 62 feet. And when you get up there, just take a deep breath, breathing in source energy. And then drop down, back down, down through your higher self and into your head. So you're right in the middle of your brain. You're like standing right behind your eyeballs so you're able to look out. And in your mind, just imagine your house. So you can imagine your house as like a, um, like a, what's it called? You know, like the, what are those things? Dollhouse, like a dollhouse that has no back. So imagine your house. You could be looking at this dollhouse from the street. You could be looking at it from right you know, next to it. You can see it. Or you can see it as like blueprints or plans or something like that. But just kind of imagine something that represents your house. And then right outside your front door, I want you to imagine like almost like a phone booth or something. It's like a magical phone booth. And it basically holds all of the energy that does not serve you, that does not serve your family. So anything that's not for your husband's highest and best good, anything that's coming home with him from work, um, including spirits, energies, emotions, maybe he's arguing with somebody at the office, so he's bringing home argumenta argumentative energy. So then he comes home and all of a sudden he's arguing with you and doesn't really know why and you guys are arguing about stupid stuff it's because he has that energy in his field and doesn't realize it 
So the energy that's around us pretty much drives us and causes us to do what we do. So if we can be aware of the energy around us and clear it, at least clear the stuff that doesn't belong to us, then you know we're way ahead of the game there. If we can learn to recognize our own energy and begin to work through those things, that's when real spiritual growth happens. But let's start first by just kind of clearing the stuff that doesn't matter, clearing the stuff that's not for the highest and best good from them, and then kind of see a shift. And this, and obviously, you're going to be clearing yourself too, but this is just a video on clearing them. So by doing that connection with grounding and going up to source and pulling that energy and you're actually clearing a lot of your energy in your snow globe because of the high frequency of, of pulling in source energy into your field. But we can go into that in, a, in another uh, video. But anyway, so what you're going to do is to basically set up this like vestibule, like, like a phone booth type thing. Outside the front door, you can do it like right as they walk onto the property, like up the little walkway or something like that. And you're going to ask that all energies that do not belong to them, all energies that they're bringing home from work, and all energies that are not for your family's highest and best good, as well as your own, be basically vacuumed off them into that vestibule. And then once it's in there, all of that is transmuted into light and then just disappears. So it just poof disappears but it needs to go into that little phone booth thing so when they walk by it it'll be like whoosh, all the energy will go in there and it'll be released and it won't be on their field and you'll notice that if you try this uh, they will probably be a little bit different I've actually had my husband say did you just clear my energy I don't feel stressed anymore uh, or you know if we're in an argument or something like that I'll actually imagine that all the energy that is the root of the argument, all of the energy that's causing the argument that belongs to other people be sucked off of me into the light. I'll clear my energy first and make sure that, that um, you know, I'm not just going, oh, it's because he has horrible energy on him. It's, it's me first. It's always me first. It's always you first. And then you can clear someone else's energy because it may just be you projecting and they may not even be in a bad mood. So anyways, I'll clear myself and then clear him and he'll actually he's getting good he's actually feeling the shift when it happens so anyways um you imagine that energy there and um then basically just ask that that stay there for the next 24 hours and it'll stay there you can set it up to have anyone's energy that's walking into your house be cleared uh since they're on your property you're not really violating their they're, you know, you don't need to ask someone permission, can I clear your energy if they're walking into your house because it's your house. So you can set that up outside the front door and have it kind of take any energies or entities or spirits or emotions or feelings that do not serve your house, that are not for your house's highest and best good, sent into there and transmuted into light. What will most likely happen is if somebody's coming to visit and their energy gets cleared as they're walking in the door, the energy will be there waiting for them when they leave because you really don't have permission to clear their energy, but you have permission to keep your house clean and sanitary. If you think of emotions and feelings as being like stinky, smelly smog around people, you want to have them bathe before they walk in the house. So anyway, um, I hope this helps. I'm going to um, do a channeling, but I'll do that in a separate video and post that separately as well because the guides are coming in. They want to channel, but they're the ones that told me to teach you guys this exercise today. So I hope that it works. I hope that it helps and we'll see you again tomorrow. Thanks. Bye.